Hey everyone, so um, I wanted to make a quick little video showing you how I process colors in Capture One. Typically I don't usually process colors in Capture One just because a lot of my clients will ask me to do it after the fact and this way it makes colors adjustable. But a lot of the times people will ask me to do it um, beforehand just because there's a lot of capabilities with adjusting colors in RAW. and for and first and foremost I think the reason why I made this video is also to show people that um, you can modify colors quite a bit in capture one and I wanted to give you guys a real world a real world example of how I do it in this example um, this is the image that I'm going to be working with and this image is one amazing beauty image that I think has a lot of potential now the place that I typically want to take it to will vary just depending on how I feel and if there's references from the client I'll adjust accordingly but in this example this image is going to be taken from this to this um, you'll notice that there's a lot of things that are happening and it looks complicated but it's actually quite easy so I'm going to take it uh, from the start and get rid of this really quick so I'll go ahead and delete hit OK and this will be my original image. The first thing that I typically will do is adjust exposures. Um, I'll make sure that I'll have the right black and white points, I'll have the right exposure amounts, and then I'll start adjusting color on top of that. So the first thing we'll do is come to our exposure tab over here. Now, if you're new to Capture One, I'm gonna link you to a introduction to Capture One in the comments below. That way you can check out everything you need to know to get started. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to jump in and show you basically how it is that I modify these colors. Alright, so the first thing we'll do is bring up this exposure. And I've already done this before, so I kind of already have an idea of how it's done. I'm just going over the steps to give you an insight about how it, how it happens. And not so much the meth, uh, method essentially. Um, so after the exposure, the next thing I want to do is come down and adjust my levels. So I'll pretty much make sure that when I look at the histogram, I have all my information tightly packed and I'll bring the highlights in a little bit more and you'll notice that they're starting to get clipped, which is okay for now because it gives me this really nice contrast and I'm going to go ahead and recover these highlights um, as my next step which is done here in the high dynamic range area. So I'll bring over the highlight slider all the way and you'll notice when I go before and after a lot of the highlights are also recovered which is great. So I'll bring it in a little bit here and maybe go halfway or so just so that we don't completely bring everything back but we keep that really nice glow and all these bits over here on the lips and things like that, we're going to manually come in later and recover these details here by using a few mask features in Capture One. Now, the next thing I'll do is come over into my curves and give it a slight S curve. I don't really have any specific values that I'm going to be using just because I go by eye more than I go by numbers. So when I go up and down, you'll notice this intensive pop that happens. And that's the look I'm essentially going for. Except now a lot of our colors are oversaturated. And I think I'm going to be tweaking that. So let me see if I can get to where I want with my curves. So something around there and then over here, I'll come in and tweak it. Uh, that's a little bit too much. There we go. Alright, so the next step is going to be my saturation because once I've adjusted my exposure, my levels, um, I typically will find that a lot of beauty images that have a lot of contrast also has a bit of desaturation going on because it seems like it's the best of both worlds where you have the tonality of the black and white and the richness of the color. So I'll bring that down a bit, um, say around here. And let's tweak a little bit more of the levels. There we go. So something around there. 
Now let's play around with um, colors a little bit more. So I'll come over to my color tab and just in case you don't notice, uh, just in case your sliders are in a different area, um, it's because I typically, I think I customize my workflow, but if you want to customize your workflow, you can go to Window, Workspace, and tweak things around, or you can pick and prod these little uh, palettes. That way you can make it customized to whatever it is that you feel most comfortable with. Now I think the first thing I want to do is take advantage of the three three-way color balance tool here. So I'll go into my highlights and I want to add a little bit of warmth into my highlights because the yellow tone is uh, something I generally think looks good overall. Then I'll go into my shadows, add a little bit of that maybe. Let's see, a little bit of oranges. And lastly, I'm going to come into my color editor tab and kind of desaturate the skin a little bit more and not the lips and also lighten them a bit. So I'm going to take my color picker here in the advanced tab. I'm going to pick the skin. Now that I have the skin color generally picked, I will hit view selected color range. First thing I'll do is bring down my hardness so that way it slowly starts to tweak the color area that I want. Then I'll bring these endpoints in and do it accordingly. And then I'll basically see where it is. There we go. So if I move the saturation slide around, you'll notice that it's mostly the skin that's being desaturated. So I'm going to bring the saturation down a bit. And then I think, let's see, how much do I want this? 22. There we go, something like that. Um, so basically, if things typically don't work, um, you want to go ahead and first make sure the smoothness is all the way down so it's more selective in the area that it's selecting. The smoothness basically shows you the color that you picked and the surrounding neighbor colors. And in this case, since the lips are similar to the skin, I made sure the smoothness was as low as it could go. Um, lastly, I'm going to come into my local adjustments. I will add a mask or a layer, sorry. I'll name this Highlight Rescue. Now the first thing I want to do is basically bring back more of the highlights here or basically the exposure. Um, so I'll take the exposure down and this will load the layer. Now I'm going to draw my mask, so I'll click on the paintbrush. I'll click on my settings. The opacity is low because I'm doing it gently. The size will change uh, with the bracket keys and I will do a few strokes over the area. And here we go. Okay, so I think we're generally done. Um, I will do a few more tweaks uh, if I go too far or if I didn't go far enough. But generally this is where I think I like the image. Now let's take a look um, and go into our tabs so you can kind of get an idea of exactly how things are looking. Now, so let's go and check out our before and after. I'm going to reset this temporarily. So this is our before. This is our after. One more time before and after. Well, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. I'll be sure to make more in the future with other examples. Um, and for more videos, stay tuned to my channel for um, exclusive content and information.